Hello and welcome to the seventh video in this series looking at Simple Flappy Robin uh, using the Cocos 2DX framework for JavaScript. It's been about 12 months since the last video. I hope I can remember where I am in this video. Um, apologies for that. Uh, life gets in the way. Uh, I hope I can get back to making slightly more regular videos from now on. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, where are we now? So the last time, uh, the last video I did, we had the Robin jumping up and down thing, scrolling across the screen and the Robin resets to the middle of the screen when it hits the floor. The next stage would be, and what I did in the other series of this game, was actually to put tubes scrolling across the screen. But I don't want to do that now. I want to avoid having to rework some of the code later on. So I'd actually like to start thinking about the game logic. And in particular, a couple of things. When the Robin dies and it hits the floor, we'd like to be able to implement here a little pause so that before it resets, everything freezes to allow us later to show some kind of game over label or something like this. Also, when the, re -robin, when the robin resets itself to the middle of the screen, uh, at the moment, if I just flick into the code here inside game.js, you remember that inside the onTick function here, the robin gets reset to the height divided by 2. Well, it would be nice to store this in a variable instead of making this calculation each time. The other thing we want to be able to do is, when the robin is fixed on the floor, um, we don't want to process any touches on the screen or anything to restart the game. We want, the force, want to force the user to have to wait in frustration. Uh, so we want some way of processing the touches. And the other thing we'll need for later on as well is the amount of time elapsed in the game so far. And that will be for things like when we spawn the tubes at different time intervals. We'll want to know how much time has elapsed since the last one we spawned to spawn the next tubes. That'll come in later videos, but we'll need something for that as well. So what I want to do in this video is the first of uh, probably two or three where we set up the, the, the game logic for the Robin. So not much will actually change with the app in this video. We'll just start laying the, the groundwork. I've changed from the last video, um, which I think was on a Windows PC. I've gone back to a, a Mac here, um, have various computers. Um, this one's a MacBook Pro. I hope you can't hear it hissing too much in the background. It seems to to be a little bit hot for whatever reason. Well, it is summer, I guess. So let's go to the code here. I'm using Sublime Text now. I think it's a bit of a nicer uh, interface and certainly nicer color scheme, probably easier to see uh, on videos. And the first place we're going to go is inside gamemanager.js. I just want to scroll down. We've got all these constants here. I just want to scroll down below the gravity and declare a couple of new constants. So one's going to be called true. I'm going to set that equal to one. And one's going to be called false. And we'll set that equal to zero. And the reason I set these is JavaScript has its own true and false, but I like to, it's a bit of a, a leftover from my old C programming days many, many years ago. I like to declare my own true and false. You don't have to do this, but I do. So we've declared this. And the other thing I want to do is I want to declare a time span for re-enable. And all that is, is when the the game, when the Robin hits the ground and we have that pause time, that's that pause time here. And I'm just going to call it re-enable time and set that equal to 2.5. So it'll be 2.5 seconds. So we set our constants up in here. We can go now to start setting up the first parts of the logic inside game.js. So I've got everything in here, hopefully the same as it was last time you saw it, because it's been a long time since I did the last video, but I think it is. And what we want to do is inside the init function here, we want to start adding a little bit more down the bottom here just to set up some of our logic. So I said that we'd need to record the game time. So we'll set this to zero, make a new variable so we can keep that updated. And then we also want to know whether the game has started or not. That's also critical for taking score and things like this. So we'll set this equal to false because when the app first starts, no game has started. And then I said we want to record the middle position of the screen, so we'll call it the middle Y, and we'll set this then equal to the size um, dot height, and just divide it by 2. I didn't cut that, did I? No, I copied it good. Okay, so that then gives us the middle of the screen. And the last one we want to do for now is we want to set this processing of a touch, whether we actually want to do something with a touch, and we'll set that for now equal to false. So when the game, when the app first starts, we haven't got a game running and we're not going to be processing any touches. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is before diving a little bit into the on tick function, I just want to set up some functions for later on. 
So if we think about uh, the game logic, at the moment, inside the on tick, if the robin dies, then we reset it, we stop the clouds, and we immediately put the robin to the middle of the screen. Well, now we want to be a little bit more sophisticated with this. We want a pause and then the robin to be reset, which means then we're going to need a function that when the user clicks the screen, we want to start the game again. So we'll need a start game, and we'll also need a stop game function. And we'll need a function to be called, um, well, but when the robin hits the bottom of the, when it hits the floor, we'll stop the game um, and the game is over. But when we do this, we'll need to schedule another function to be called after our two and a half seconds. And this will be the function, uh, this will be a function that will be called the re-enable after the game is over. So we'll need to set up some functions to deal with all this. So we're just going to declare these and then we'll start fleshing out the code. So the first one's going to be called start game. So this is the function that's going to be called when we start the game, as it's called. The next function we're going to have is going to be called the stop game function. And the next function we'll have is going to be a game over function. And last but not least, we'll have a re-enable, if I can actually spell this, after game over and this also is a function and this will be the function that's actually scheduled to be called when the game over is called so there we set up some of our logic inside here and we can also write a little bit of the code as preparation inside here so the thing I want to do here first of all is we'll just set the this and processing touches equal to false because we're not going to process any touches at all when the game uh, is over. So basically when the robin has hit the bottom of the screen. When this has happens, we want to call uh, stop game and do whatever we need to do when the game has stopped inside there. And critically, what we want to do is we want to schedule. So we call the function inside the framework called schedule once and this re-enable after game over and we want to schedule this after our re-enable time which is the 2.5 seconds like so. So when game over is called then we'll stop processing touches, we'll stop the game and we'll schedule this re-enable after game over to be called. When that's called then we can say that this and our robin dot y is equal to this and middle y, which will set the robin to go back to the middle of the screen, and then we can start processing touches again. So though we can't use these quite yet in the app, it's probably fairly clear to see that when the robins hit the bottom of the screen, then we'll stop processing touches, we'll do something inside this stop game, and we'll schedule after two and a half seconds to re-enable the game. What we want to do inside this stop game here it's here that we actually want to stop the stop the clouds. So we'll call the stop clouds function here. And now we want to say that our game started is equal to false because the game is no longer running. And we want to reset also our game time that we recorded that we're recording and set that equal to zero. Now I could try and combine these in some way, but for later logic later on in the game, I like to leave them separated. And the last thing then is to look at the start game. So if I go back up to the uh, on touches began, you can see here that we set the rob moving and then start the clouds going. And that's basically what we're going to do now inside the start game. So inside here, I'm just going to copy those lines down here and drop them inside the start game like so, except tar won't work very well now because it's no longer target, it'll have to be this. And we'll start the clouds. And the other thing we'll need to do is set that a game has started equal to true. So this is our game now started and ready to go. And that should be most of the logic actually to deal with everything we need. So when a game starts, if the clouds get started, Robin's moving and it's true. When it's stopped, the game started is false. The game time is zero. We stop the clouds and the game over and re-enable are used to deal with the processing of our touches. All very good.
So now let's move up then and have a look at the actual OnTouch began because that's a little bit that we need to adjust here. So the first thing is we want to change a little bit of the logic. I'm going to take out this line here because it's no longer needed in the console. And in fact, I'm going to go back to the browser and just do a quick refresh and check that we don't have huge errors inside the program. No, we don't seem to. So what we want to do now is change the logic a little bit. So the first thing we want to say is if um, our target is processing touches, sorry, I'll say if it's equal to false, then we'll just return false because there's nothing that we really need to, to do here. We're just going to ignore this touch. In fact, we can actually do this completely differently. I'm just realizing well, because I set the logic up incorrectly. We're going to return false anyway, whatever we do inside here, because we're not going to do anything with the touch that we're actually returning. We just need to know we touch the screen. We can actually say we only want to do something if we're actually processing touch. So if we're processing touches, then we want to set the Robin uh, start speed like this, which is where the Robin then gets sent to jump to jump upwards and the other thing we want to do is if our game started is equal to false then we'll set uh, we'll call our start game function so what we're saying here is if we're in the condition where we're processing touches so we haven't had a game over where we've got that two and a half second pause then we'll ask if the game has actually been started and if it hasn't then we'll call to start that game and if I just scroll down to start game you'll see that now we'll set the robin moving start the cl start the clouds and the game started will be set to true the only thing then to do is to remove this little bit of logic inside here like so so that's almost there with some of our logic now the next thing to do inside the on enter part when everything's actually set up in the application, we want to make sure that we can start then actually processing touches. Now, one thing you'll see is that inside the stop game, we do a little bit of resetting here as well. So what we're going to do is we're actually inside the on enter, just to make sure everything's okay. We're going to call this and stop game. And we're going to call this and process touch is equal to true. So once we finish the on enter, we know that everything's set up and it's okay. Then uh, we make sure that clouds and things are stopped. It shouldn't be necessary. And then the main part here is that we now say we're ready to start processing touches, etc. So the last thing to do now, I'm just going to go back here and just reset the application and check we don't have any disasters. We don't because we're not really calling anything uh, is to deal with this on tick section here, which is the update of what's going on inside here. So this is going to change a little bit now from from the logic. So I'll just leave the old code inside there. So the first thing we want to do is we want to say store a local variable saying that the game over so far is equal to false. So the game is not over and we'll determine whether the game is over in the code below. So the first we want to do is we want to say if a game has actually been started, because if a game hasn't been started, then we're not really interested in doing anything. The first thing we'll do is we'll increment the game time that's elapsed uh, since the last call here for the current game. So that gives us the um, total amount of time. And now what we'll do is we'll say that if the Robin has, so we'll take this section here and now we'll say that if the Robin has actually fallen to the bottom of the floor, I'll just try and line up the brackets here then and I'll just delete all of this here. So if the Robin has fallen to the bottom of the floor, then we'll set our game over variable now equal to true because the game is now over. We'll take out the logic that we had before. So that's the most important thing that's inside here. And now what we can do is we can now that we've done our logic inside the game, we can ask something. If the game over is still false, then we simply want to call update on the Robin's position. Otherwise, what we'll do is we'll call our game over function, which will stop us processing touches, call stop game and schedule the re-enable after game over. Hopefully. 
So just go back up into on, on tick. And here then we'll say that if game over is equal to false, then we simply want to say this dot and Robin and update Robin with delta time, which we'll call the update Robin function. Otherwise, this dot game over. And hopefully all being well now, that should that's changed our logic a little bit as long as I remove all of this code here, otherwise we'll be in trouble. And we should now see that we have a bit of a pause when the Robin dies. So let's just refresh all of this and go. And now you can see the Robin sticks at the bottom of the screen and then gets reset to the middle after a few seconds. And when it's stuck at the bottom of the screen, if I now click, nothing's actually happening until the Robin gets set back to the middle of the screen. Good, okay, so that's it then for this video. It's gone on a little bit longer than I thought. I decided halfway through to, to, to fill out these functions rather than leaving them empty. And the app did indeed uh, change a bit in the end. But I think you get the general idea that we've set up now quite nicely to be able to spawn uh, things at different time intervals because we're tracking the amount of time that's elapsed in the game so far. We've got a nice bit of logic in now. We've taken outside the tick, this handling of uh, the various bits of the robin. We've put them now inside the start, stop game, game over, and re-enable re -enable after game over. Um, you could combine these two actually as they are, but I like to leave them separate now in case things need to be added in later. There are some cases where you need them separated, but hopefully you've got the general idea of how the logic works in the game. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, see you in the next one.